Well, thank you very much for this introduction and good evening everybody uh, and thank you uh, to the forum for having the consumer perspective uh, present uh, also uh, this evening. Uh, if you look at obstacles, um, I think from a consumer perspective the first question is what uh, would be needed in terms of having really a vibrant consumer driven digital single market. So for us the ingredients are consumer trust, consumer choice and access, and it's also enforcement and redress. Um, Vicky Ford mentioned that the number of consumers who shop um, cross-border online is uh, now, I think it's at 15%. Uh, and it's not such a bad increase in terms of uh, figures. If you look at uh, the figure in 2010, it was at 9%. So I think in four years or in five years, it's up to 5 or 6% more. That's quite considerable. So consumers do go more online, uh, and they do shop more cross-border. So there is a positive tendency. But still, the barriers that I would uh, like to list, which are most important, are that uh, there is a lot of business practices, unfair business practices, <laughs> very often that are about segmenting the market. Geo-blocking is a very important new buzzword in this respect, and we're very happy that uh, Vice President Ansip mentions that uh, very often. It has to do with different aspects, also with copyright and the territoriality of copyright, but also with simply discrimination and fragmentation and price discrimination in particular. Um, another point is legal uncertainty. Uh, in um, the field of digital content, so everything that you download from the internet, we do not have European harmonization of consumer rights. When it comes to the examples that were just given by Vicky Ford, when you have a problem with a digital product, there is no legal certainty at the European level, and there is not even legal certainty at the national level, because many member states don't have any specific uh, legal rules in place. No modernization of consumer rights in this uh, aspect has happened in most of the countries. So you don't know what your rights are. You don't even know is a digital download, is it a service, uh, is it a program products or that sales law would apply. So there is a big problem and as we always say, if the consumer doesn't know what his or her rights are, then you basically find uh, yourself as a consumer in a situation where you don't have any rights at all. So that's very difficult. Um, enforcement and redress. From all the surveys that we have from the European Commission, the Eurobarometers, it's from our own membership, we know that the number one question that consumers always ask is, what do I do, I do if something goes wrong? So that's really the main occupation. And in this context, I think uh, it's very important to underline that a lot has been done in the recent four or five years. We have the ADR. Uh, directive, alternative dispute resolution, very important for consumers because as a consumer you cannot go normally to court. It's much too expensive, it's not proportionate to the economic value at stake and certainly you cannot go to court if your trader is in another country. Even if you could sue in your own country, it would be much too complicated procedural wise. Um, so alternative dispute resolution is a major step forward and on top of that we have the ODR regulation, online dispute uh, resolution, which means that the European Commission will manage a kind of platform which will connect consumers and traders in a cross-border situation where a problem arises. All of that will be operational only as of 2015, later this year, or 2016. So we have to wait a little bit until we will see the impact. And we, from a consumer perspective, we think that there will be a very positive impact, hopefully, on the trust component of uh, consumers. Um, the other thing to mention is the Consumer Rights Directive, uh, which is a directive that entered into force or became operational only in June last year, but it's really providing a level playing field, a full harmonization uh, for the businesses in particular in terms of everything which is done before the conclusion of a contract. So the information that you have to give on your website if you sell a product, uh, if you sell a service, it's now harmonized. There is one standard across the European Union. I know there are some problems with the implementation and there are some regulatory choices that the member states can make, but overall I think this is a major step and again I think it will uh, be possible to see the positive impact maybe in, in a, in a the course of this year when everybody will be, uh, be um, getting used to it and, and apply it smoothly. 
If you look at the digital single market uh, package that is upcoming now and we expect it very soon uh, and Mr. Uh, well, President Juncker's priorities, there is one initiative which we all very much wonder about and are curious to see uh, and, and that is the online uh, and digital purchases legislative initiative that was announced already in July by President Juncker and this is really a consumer specific measure. Um, we have just yesterday and uh, on Friday sent uh, a letter to Commissioner Jourova in charge of uh, consumer protection and to Vice uh, President Ansip to explain what we expect from that initiative and I would like to raise very briefly this five or six point that we have told the Commission we would like to see in that context. First of all, as I said, legal uncertainty if it comes to digital downloads uh, and also services like cloud computing. We see a lot of unfair contract terms in cloud computing uh, contracts. We see a lot of unfair contract terms, by the way, also in social media, uh, where it's also unclear whether these are so covered by the Consumer Rights Directive. So if you have uh, a Facebook uh, subscription and you give your um, uh, photos on Facebook, the copyright is, is held by Facebook and our French member has just been in court and is still in court attacking this kind of clause. This will be very interesting, very emblematic um, case that we expect there. Um, so digital content, there we need European harmonization. Clearly this is the case for a legislative initiative. But if it comes to tangible goods, we think a lot of legislation is already in place. The Consumer Rights Directive, as I mentioned, we don't need another piece of legislation and definitely we don't need another optional piece of legislation. You may know the story of the Common European Sales Law. This will be modified and we think it should be substantively changed because optional law will not work for consumers. But what we see a lot of benefit in would be a European model contract for e-commerce consumer contracts. So we have been starting doing work on this already two years ago uh, and we think that could be a major um, initiative uh, to help in particular also business to see what kind of contract um, uh, uh, provisions do you use if you want to sell cross-border uh, in order to give uh, guidance in this respect and to link it to alternative dispute resolution. Uh, I think that would be a very comprehensive set um, of uh, an initiative. What we think is also necessary is uh, clarify the Rome 1 regulation. I don't know if you know, it's the regulation about what law applies and there is a very specific consumer regime which, as we understand, has caused a lot of problems because many traders think that they have to anticipate to which consumer they sell and what law would apply to that consumer resident in that country. And I think there is a lot of misconception because this is not what is legally required. So a clarification also in line with the European Court of Justice would be very uh, useful, I think, for businesses and for consumers alike. Trust marks at the European level, another important element. I know that Emota, e-commerce Europe, you're engaged in these kind of initiatives. We think they can have added value at the European level. So why not look at this um, uh, together? Uh, and then finally, uh, a modernization of consumer rights so that consumers know they can trust, particularly if something goes wrong, that they have the same rights at the very high level of protection across the European Union. Guarantee rights is the one element where we don't have uh, sufficient harmonization and sufficient protection, also from our point of view. And then to conclude, just to mention, obviously, the services directive, very important, the discrimination clause, so that it is not allowed to discriminate against consumers or um, against um, 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 the, the, the contractual partner uh, in, um, in relation uh, to the country of residence of that person. A lot of unclarity there that needs to be addressed. Uh, and the other important point also already mentioned is intermediaries. Intermediaries in the Internet are extremely important. What are intermediaries? It's platforms. Uh, and there I think there is a lot uh, to do uh, in terms of also legally clarifying their liability. Who is liable? Shared economy, a very big question. Airbnb, all these platforms that intermediate, but the consumer probably thinks that it's the platform who carries the liability and actually the contract is not with the platform, but the contract is with the trader or even with another consumer. So there is a lot of unclarity. Uh, and search engines, needless to say that we have a very emblematic case currently pending 
spending and looks at it from a, comp a competition perspective, but consumers need to rely on results that are not manipulated if they go to a search machine and if they use comparison websites, also very important to open the internal market. Um, they should rely on search results, comparisons that are impartial. So all these things we think they can build in into what we already have in terms of current legislation, but there needs to be more clarity and there needs to be more guidance. And last but not least, shipping costs much too expensive cross-border. Very often this is a reason why consumers are turned down and say, well, I, I will not buy from another country because it's just simply compared. It's too expensive. The product is cheaper, but the deal in total is then too expensive. So to conclude, a lot of initiatives which are non-legislative but would, would be really very helpful to facilitate uh, consumers' access to the digital single market. Thank you very much. Thank you.